Yes lads, how is it going? Welcome back to the channel. And what we're going to be doing today is a Leicester City vs Burnley preview. So on Sunday the 20th of September, Burnley face Leicester City at the King Power Stadium. It'll be a big test for Burnley, it's our actual first game of the Premier League season in the 2021 Premier League season. So in our last competitive game, we played yesterday at the time of recording and it's against Sheffield United in the Cup. We drew 1-1, went to penalties and beat them 5-4 on penalties with Ollie McBurney missing his penalty. We had an awful first half in that game, so I'm just going to sum that game up quickly. We had an awful first half. Second half, we came out, we looked very, very strong. We conceded in the first half due to sloppy defending from Jimmy Dunn and Matthew Alton. They tapped it in at the back post. Burnley then second half, came out stronger, nearly scored one or two. And then we actually finally got the goal with Vidra. J Rodriguez chests it down, Vidra hits it over the keeper, great finish. We did a watch one for that game, it did quite well, got like 7k views, so that's decent, so thank you if you did tune into that one. So that moves me on to the next point, I will be doing a watch along for this game, make sure to tune in 10 minutes before the game. So yeah, a watch along just by myself, I'm just going to be reacting to the game, watching it along with you guys, getting your opinions. So with all that said, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe, turn post notifications on, so you do know when I upload a video or I do indeed go live. Make sure to leave a like on the video down below as well, it's massively appreciated. So first of all, let's just summarise our transfer news so far. We're still in the transfer window, there's still a few weeks left. So, who have we signed so far? Um, Give me one second, give me one second. Let me, let me just think. Oh, Will Norris, yeah, yeah, we, we've signed Will Norris. Yeah, but on a serious note, we really do need to sign some players before the end of the window. We've got the smallest squad in the league already, and we've lost even more players since then. So come on, Sean Dyche, you need to get into that board Tell them that you want some money to make some good signings and get the signings through. In my personal opinion, we need a right back and we now need a right mid due to the injury of Johan Berg Gummonson. So let's talk about that Johan Berg Gummonson injury in the last game against Sheffield United. Personally, I think it was a red card. I said it in the stream at the time that it should have been a red card. But the player didn't even get a free kick. I don't think we got a free kick from it. So referee, what was you doing? If that's in a Premier League match with VAR, I'm not being funny, but that is a red card. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but I just personally think it was a red card. Make sure, if you have seen the tackle on Goodmanson, make sure to leave it down below. What did you think of that one? Both studs in the air, definitely high up into his knee. Definitely a red card for me. Right, so I'm going to give you my team selection that I would go with for this match. I think I'll, I've gone with Nick Pope, a right back. I've gone with Phil Bardsley, a centre back. I've gone with James Tarkowski, and I've also gone with Kevin Long at the left. At left back, I've gone with Charlie Taylor. Obviously, in a 4 4 2 formation, this is a right mid. I've gone with Robbie Brady, who had a decent game at Sheffield United. Fair play. Left mid, I've gone with Dwight McNeil. Again, he didn't feature against Sheffield United, so it's hard to tell how he's going to be, but he did score in the last pre season match. In centre mid, I've gone with Josh Brownhill. He had quite a good game against Sheffield United. And I've also gone with Ashley Westwood, who had a very good game against Sheffield United, one of our best players. Up front, I've also gone with Jay Rodriguez, who got the assist for the Burnley goal on the other day. I've also gone with Chris Wood, who did feature for like eight minutes at the end. I nearly actually got a goal. So it's going to be my team selection. Make sure to leave down below what would you go with if Rumor Tarkowski will be back for the game. So hopefully he can be. Hopefully he will be lining up in a Burnley shirt as well after Leicester had interest in him earlier in the season. So I'm now going to give you my score prediction, which is going to be a 1-0 Burnley win. I've got to be confident back the lads. It's going to be hard to say how we're going to play in this first match because Leicester have obviously played a game already and they've done very well. They beat West Brom 3-0, so fair play to them for that. A very good game. I did a watch on that and it got like 11 k views, so fair play up the Leicester boys. I know there's quite a lot of them that watch the channel now. So 1-0 win. I've gone with a standard Sean Dyche win. I hope we can do something. I really hope we can get at least a draw. A draw would be fantastic from this game, considering Leicester finished 5th last season and we finished 10th. Let's just talk about the last two games we played against Leicester last season. We played them at the King Power Stadium in 2019. We lost 2-1. It was a very controversial game. I've actually got a link to that video. If you want to watch it, there's a link on my channel where you can go and watch the vlog I did for that game. And we also played Leicester in January this year in 2020. And we beat them 2-1 at Turf Moor. The key point to that game was that Nick Pope saved a penalty and it's all said by every Burnley fan that that Leicester game is what changed our season from being lower end, sort of in a relegation battle, to coming up and finishing it into the top half of the table. Leicester fans and Burnley fans, let me know down below what score prediction you are also going with and good luck to Leicester. I'm going to be getting a Leicester fan on now so go subscribe to him, there's a link in the description to his channel 
LCFC by an over to you. Ben, cheers for having me on for this opposition preview. Leicester versus Burnley on Sunday night. Obviously, it's our first game back at the King Power this year in the season. And obviously, for you guys, it's your first Premier League game. Obviously, you played Sheffield United in the Carabao Cup. That went to penalties and stuff. But this is your first league game back, as you guys will know. But in terms of Leicester, it's an interesting one because a lot of Leicester fans were worried coming into this season because we didn't invest in a centre-back. We didn't invest in a winger when Chilwell was leaving. So... If, you talk, if we were playing this game about a week ago, I would have been a lot more panicked than I am now because we brought in Castagne and he did absolutely brilliantly in his debut. Obviously, it was against West Brom and stuff and no disrespect to West Brom, but you guys are going to be a much bigger test than West Brom. Um, we haven't brought in a centre-back and we still haven't, but we're looking in the right directions for them. You seen uh, people like Fabrizio Romano reporting on Twitter that we've contacted, obviously, you guys about Tarkowski. Uh, we've been looking at Jonathan Tarr from Bayer Leverkusen, Wesley Fofana from St Etienne. So we're so we're in the market for a centre-back, which is encouraging to see. We've signed under, we're just waiting for that to be announced. And by the time this is uploaded, it could well be announced. He won't feature against Burnley, but the fact that we filled that hole in our team. So our squad depth is definitely heading in the right direction, which is, was a big concern for me at the start of this season. Obviously, we've got Europa League but we wouldn't have a squad to compete Europa League, Premier League and the domestic cups. And I still don't think we'll be able to compete in them all. Obviously, we've got Arsenal, I believe, on Tuesday in the Carabao Cup. And I'm going to be honest, particularly behind closed doors, I couldn't give less of a shit about the Carabao Cup. The squad deck is looking a lot better, which was a bit of a concern heading into this season. Obviously, it's not the level of some of the so-called big six clubs, but... At the same time, we have Europa League football this year. It was something that we did need to improve on. In terms of tomorrow's game against Burnley, I'm expecting a very difficult game. Obviously, last year we had two very close games. Two games that were very heavily influenced by some absolutely shocking refereeing decisions. And I think they went both ways, but that was the story of last season. VAR, absolutely horrendous. But again, another video for another day. And I think a lot of Burnley fans will agree how shit VAR actually is. But... In terms of the starting eleven that you can expect to see from Leicester, this is a difficult one really because we do have a couple of players unavailable. So we don't have Johnny Evans due to him getting a red card at the end of last season. And then we don't have Ricardo Carrera who's still injured. But we do have James Madison coming back into the squad after a long-term injury, which is good to see. So this is a starting eleven I think Brandon Rogers will go with, but you can never be 100% sure. So I've gone with the 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one because it's a formation that... Um, Brendan Rodgers has been typically using it. Looks with some of the signings we're making that he could be looking to push towards a five at the back. But obviously, obviously we don't have Evans and we don't have Ricardo, so that becomes very hard to do against Burnley. So 4-1-4-1. Four, one, four, one. So I've gone in goal Schmeichel, who will be our captain. Right back, we've gone with Castagne, who he will switch to left back when Ricardo's back and fit. And then as the two centre-backs, we've gone Ndidi and Siunchu. So Ndidi as a centre-back, he did, he's done very well. I'm not a massive fan of seeing him there because of how good he is in the midfield. But we are sort of limited for options and stuff. So I've gone with Ndidi and Siunchu as a centre-back. But Siunchu's only, our only really natural centre-back who's fit. So moving into the left-back, we've got James Justin. He's been doing a decent job. I'd like to see a little bit more of him going forward. And then as the one-holding midfielder, this... This player really surprised me last week, and that's Nicholas Mendy. And he signed a new contract at the end of last season, and he got a bit of criticism, well, the club got a bit of criticism for giving him this new contract. But with the fact that we missed out on Champions League football, so we couldn't sign Carvalho, I think he adds a good bit of depth in this position for us. He did very well against West Brom. And as I said before, though, this is a different test against you guys. But I do think there will be games this season where he can come in, allow Ndidi to rest, allow Chowdhury to rest and he did perform to a very good level last week. Then the two midfielders in front of him, they're sort of roaming eights, will be Yuri Tielemans and James Madison who is returning. He played off the bench against West Brom last week, got 15 minutes under his belt. I'd expect him to start this game and potentially come off at half time or in the 60th minute and then we might see Dennis Prey or something but having James Madison back for us is an absolutely huge boost. And then on the left hand side we're going to have Harvey Barnes on the right hand side we'll probably have Iosi Perez, it'll be too soon for us to see under and then obviously the main man up top, Jamie Vardy. But anyway, that's my starting eleven. it's a bit of a guess because it's unknown times for Leicester at the moment but 
I have done a preview on my channel with Ben, so make sure to check that one out. But again, cheers Ben for having me on, and I look forward to talking to you after the game. All right, so thank you to Anthony from that LCFC bio. Go subscribe to his channel if you aren't already down below. Thank you for that input there. And this is going to be the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, lads. It's massively appreciated. Make sure to tune in for the watch along tomorrow. It starts 10 minutes before the game. Turn notifications on so you do know when we go live. And anyway, I'll see you tomorrow in the stream. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.